what's going on? Welcome to the David F. Paz podcast in the studio, freezing today, alone, negative 16 degrees Celsius outside, and the podcast room doesn't have very good insulation, I think, so it's pretty cold in here. Um, I wanted to do a part two of my manifestation podcast today. Um, I did a podcast a few podcasts ago about manifestation and um, a new realization that had come to me recently and and I've had some more insights on that and I thought I would share that here with you guys because it's been like really really insightful so it basically if you want to learn how to manifest and you want to you want to learn how to live the life of your dreams keep listening because I'm gonna I'm gonna un- um, let you uh, walk you through my process that I've gone through. So, I, so just to give you a brief little history, you know, I've been dedicated to spiritual growth for the last, you know, pretty much 15 years of my life. Um, getting to the root of uncovering what is holding me back, and the the more I recognize uh, the things that I have to let go of and have to transcend, then I realize there's still more after that. So there's like layers of this thing, and every time you Every time you kind of transcend one, you're like, then a new one is revealed. Um, and so it's a, it's a continuous process, the journey to enlightenment. It's like very few people will ever even, even get there. But, um, the good news about that journey is that as you continue to transcend, as you continue to move up the scale of consciousness, your life just keeps getting better and better and better. You experience more higher states of, of consciousness, like joy and abundance, and compassion and love. And so it's motivating to, to, to continue to move forward. And, you know, one of the teachings that I've, I've been teaching forever, uh, from my teacher, Dr. David Hawkins was what well, you hold in mind tends to manifest. He said, he, he said that over and over again, and, and I've been saying it over and over again, but I didn't really fully understand it until recently. And, and not that I didn't understand it, but I knew that, you know, your thoughts create your reality. And I understand that getting to the root of what creates your thoughts is probably the most important thing you can do uh, on the path to enlightenment. And so I had this realization that my thoughts create my reality and what you hold in mind tends to manifest. I've known that, but I didn't really understand how it was actually working until recently. And so this took me 15 years to uncover and uh, you're going to get it in a 15 minute podcast. So so yeah, stay tuned in here. Um, and essentially what it, what, is, what it was is this. So one of the big things that I've kind of always been like, I haven't been able to get there. I've gotten there a few times and then gone backwards is like my health. I've like kind of gone up and down in weight my whole entire life. And not that I'm like this super overweight person, but I have this vision that I want to be in super good shape. And, and I always end up kind of falling off whenever I kind of get on track diet wise. And so... I recognized that I, it was constantly on my mind that I want to get into better shape. So you would think that is a good thing. If, if I'm holding in mind that I want to get in better shape, then I should become in better shape. But the realization or the aha moment that I had was that by me saying to myself literally endlessly thousands of times a day, I am not in shape is, is, is essentially or that I need to get in shape, essentially what I'm saying to myself is that I am not in shape. I am not good enough as I am. And so thousands and thousands of times every single day, I am saying to myself that I'm not good enough or I'm not in shape. And so that's why not being in shape continues to manifest in my life. And I've had, I've had all kinds of moments and, and realizations around, around being in good shape and I've really cleared a lot of stuff around this whole issue um, with respect to, I would call it like uh, food addictions where I know, I know what I'm supposed to eat. I don't, I don't need to know how I don't need to work out more. I work out enough. It's just like this diet thing. I've never really just got, got into a rhythm or a pattern. And so it's always on my mind that my diet needs to change. And what I'm basically telling myself is that uh, I do not have a good diet. And so that continues to manifest in my life. So the takeaway here, and I'm going to get deeper into this in a minute, but the takeaway here is that we need to learn to read between the lines around what it is that we're telling ourselves. Because in my mind, me telling myself that I need to eat better wasn't an issue because it was something that was positive. But the reality, when I learned to read between the lines of that, 
was that I was holding in mind that I am not in shape. And that's why that is my reality. So like, this has like been a game changer for me. So now ever since I've, I've created this awareness, I've been able to observe how often the mind is telling me this thing, this thing that I'm not in shape. And it's like, every time I look at a mirror, every time I see somebody else is in shape, every time I see someone that's not in shape, all of these thoughts are just flooding my mind. And, and the subconscious, like the, there's a bunch of different estimates around how many thought, subconscious thoughts we have every day, but it's somewhere between like 20 and 70,000 subconscious thoughts that we have every single day. And so I'm just observing a fraction of them, but I'm recognizing, like, oh my God, this is consuming my life. And I've actually recognized that there are a few other things that consume my thoughts. Um, you know, one of them would be like uh, overall success. One of them would be um, sex would be another one, which is funny. It was like how much, how much of my thought goes towards sex. I think that came because uh, Elon Musk uh, recently said that we spend way too much time like thinking about sex. It's like, it's ridiculous how much time is spent uh, thinking about sex. And then I had a recognition that part of my need to be in shape is, is surrounded around sex as well. So it was like all of this clarity is basically is what I'm trying to get at came from me learning to observe how often I'm telling myself that I am not in shape after I learned how to reach between the lines. So now with that awareness alone, those thoughts began to reduce a little bit. So that is one thing that will happen with awareness is your thoughts will begin to reduce. It's like a, it's like you're slowing down the mind. You know, it's, if you think about, if you think about somebody dancing on the dance floor, uh, going crazy, just having the time of their life, then all of a sudden they notice that somebody's looking at them, they stop. Right. And so that's the same thing that's happening with my thoughts. You know, it's called the observer effect. Things you observe change. So I'm observing these thoughts and they're beginning to shift. And, and one of the, one of the teachings that I, that I do put out a lot is that affirmations don't work. Um, and the reason that affirmations don't work is because we have, let's say, say, let's use this as the number of 70,000. That's the number I've used for a long time. We have 70,000 subconscious thoughts a day. If we try and bring in a hundred, a thousand conscious affirmations every day, we're fighting a losing battle. We're, we're doing a hundred, a hundred positive thoughts over 70,000 negative thoughts or 70,000 thoughts that are keeping us stuck. And so in order to create, really create change in your life, you have to get to the root of what is causing all of the thoughts in the first place. And I give the analogy in the last podcast that I did about the hard drive that, you know, if your hard drive is full, you know, trying to install a new program is going to be impossible because there's no space. So in order to create the space, you need to learn how to let go of that thing that is creating the belief system, which is creating the program, which is creating the thoughts, which is creating your reality. And so, so I started asking the question, I started saying, well, okay, I recognize that these affirmations and this observer of this now new awareness that I am creating my reality by telling myself I'm not in shape. I have to get to the root of why that's happening. So how do I do that? Well, I do the same process that I always do is I learn how to, or I've learned how to connect to the infinite. And so all of the answers that you seek exist. Um, there's a universal intelligence. Uh, it's the energy of God. It's a uh, infinite intelligence, whatever you want to call it. It's essentially the, the, the cloud hard drive of the universe. So everything that's ever happened to you, everything that's ever happened in the entire history of the universe is stored in this, in this information field. And you can learn how to tap into that by getting outside of your mind. And so your mind only exists in two places, places that exist in the past or in the future, but in the present moment, the unknown is revealed to us in the present moment we essentially plug into this universal hard drive and we can get the download of information that we, uh, we are seeking. So we can download any information that we need at any single time. And so that's why they say all the answers lie within, but it's like all the answers lie, uh, within the interconnectedness of the entire world. So any question that you ever have can be answered by getting silence. The answers will come to you from the silence. And this is something you have to train yourself to do. And I've been doing it for a long time. And um, I even though that I know that I have this ability and we all have this ability, I resist doing it. But now I'm pretty much like convinced of it. So I now that I made this awareness that, okay, I got to stop telling myself this. 
I know I can't do it with affirmations because I'm fighting a losing battle. If I do that, I have to uh, get to the root of these thoughts. So I've been doing that every morning for the last three days. I've been sitting in meditation and I've been asking for why I'm having all of these thoughts. And I got flooded with information. It's like I got societal information, like about this society has, you know, put men that are like have big muscles and abs on a pedestal. I got flashes of watching um, uh, Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger as a kid. And he was like this jack guy with machine guns and, and like how much, why, like I looked up to him and all of my friends and everybody was like, we would, we would go through scenarios. Imagine we were, had muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So all of these little flashes were coming to me, flashes of shame. Um, I was a kid, flashes of not being picked um, by the girl and another, another boy being picked by the girl that I liked. And while all of it was relevant, I think it all led to the creation of of this idea that I need to be in better shape. Um, none of it was really giving me the juice. Like I could tell that it wasn't going to be the thing that that turned off all of these thoughts. And so uh, I had to sit in meditation a few times, and today is the third day that I did it. And today it finally came to me, which was that... Um, I need to get comfortable in the discomfort. And I didn't really know what that meant um, until I was actually at the gym with my trainer and I was kind of telling her about this this awareness and this aha. And then I'm like, oh, wait a second. The discomfort that I need to sit in is the discomfort that I feel when, or the discomfort, sorry, the discomfort that I don't feel when I eat like shit. So eating sugar, drinking pop. These are my things. These are the things that help me avoid discomfort. And so in order for me to shut off all of these thoughts about I am not healthy, I need to get comfortable in the discomfort. And so essentially I need to, let's just say, stop or quit and then allow that discomfort to come forward and allow myself to feel it fully so that I no longer have to keep telling myself that I am unhealthy. And what the aha moment was, the realization was, was that telling myself that I am unhealthy has kept me safe because it allows me to keep eating like shit and drinking pop. And and so if I keep telling myself that I'm unhealthy, that will keep manifesting in my life. And if that keep manifesting in my life, I won't have to deal with that pain. And and so when that kind of kind of came over me today, it was like this flood of like, oh, I now know exactly what it is that I need to do. I need to I need to quit for some sort of period of time, and maybe forever. I don't know. But when I do quit, I have to sit in the discomfort, and I have to allow that discomfort to first. I need to make awareness around what the discomfort's all about. And then second, I need to allow myself to sit in it fully until it is no longer uncomfortable. And when it is no longer uncomfortable, I will no longer need the belief that I am unhealthy, right? Because that belief was serving me in a way of keeping me unhealthy so that I was still able to avoid this pain. I hope you guys are following me here because I know it's a little bit it's a little bit hard to to kind of decipher. But ultimately, what I now know is that our mind has one primary function and that is to keep us safe. And the way the mind has been keeping me safe has been flooding, flooding my awareness, flooding my, creating all of these thoughts around this idea that I am unhealthy. And by doing so, it has been keeping me safe from feeling the discomfort of when I don't eat these sweets or drink this pop. And so it's like really clear. And so now uh, I have to go to work to begin the process of sitting in that discomfort. And I made a, I made a post the other day with a quote was like, um, with all the work that I've done around mind and ego. um, And I recognize that the ego's primary function is, is to keep us safe. I still recognize how much I avoid discomfort or the mind avoids discomfort. And kind of connecting the dots of all of this is that I finally I finally have made the connection that I'm telling myself I'm healthy, which is creating the reality of being unhealthy, and I'm doing so to avoid discomfort. 
And that realization was like this huge awareness and this huge aha moment. And also it's been this, this huge awareness around how to read between the lines of your thoughts. And like, this is the key to manifesting, right? And so once I heal from the, the discomfort that I'm going, that's going to come into my life, I'm going to create the space to then bring in the affirmations, then bring in the new feelings and the new beliefs that I am healthy, I am fit, I am energized, whatever it is, whatever the new beliefs are going to be. Those beliefs will then create new feelings of confidence or whatever that may be. And then that feeling will begin flooding my thoughts with the thoughts that I want to create the reality that I want. So I know that it's a little bit hard to kind of fully understand. Um, but I think all you need to recognize is, is you need it's just to give you a one, two, three here. You need to become aware of what you're telling yourself. You need to become aware of a habit or a behavior that's not serving you. Then you need to read between the lines of that thought so that you can see why you're remaining stuck. So let me give you one more example, then I'll wrap it up. One more example would be like, if all you think about is that you need to make more money, then what you're telling yourself is that you don't have enough money, right? And this is where I was trapped forever. And I didn't recognize that I, what I had done. And, and so my desire for money was all out of avoidance of feeling the shame I felt as a kid by not having enough. And once I healed from that shame, then my desire for money dropped and all the money that I, you know, have ever dreamed of, not all of it, but it's coming, uh, began flowing into my life. And so, so I did what I need to do with the food without even really being aware that I had done it. And so if you're holding in mind that you need to make more money, we think it's a positive thing because it gets you into action and, and, and makes you go do shit and busy work. But the reality is what you're telling yourself is that you don't have money right? You have to go out there and get it. And everything that we seek is already available to us. We are already all of the states of consciousness that, that we want to be, they're already there. So with money, money was going to buy me happiness, but happiness is already available to me. I had just blocked it out because of all of the traumatic incidences that had happened in my life, for example, like the shame of not having enough and being embarrassed of the house and the cars that I drove, that kind of stuff. So I put up a wall to happiness. And the only way I was going to get back to happiness was when I made money. So I didn't experience that shame again. And so this is the process towards moving towards high states of consciousness is learning what it is the mind is protecting us from then having the courage to go back and feel it fully, let the energy of that pain run its course so that we no longer need protection from it. And once you do that, then you can bring in the manifestations then you can bring in the feelings and all that stuff because you've created this space. But until then, you're going to be fighting a losing battle. And this is the power uh, that exists from letting go. And this is how we actually manifest. So now that I have created this awareness, you can follow along and watch. Um, because I already feel it. I've already, I felt the shift this morning, actually. Um, just looking in the mirror this morning, I, I didn't have that same negativity that I normally do. Um, even though the negativity was disguised as go get to work and get into shape, which seems like a good thing, but it actually was a negative thing. And it's actually what's been holding me in this uh, unhealthy lifestyle for like the last six, seven years. And I finally created the awareness how to break free from it. So we'll do an update in a month or so and see if I've uh, if I've started to get back into shape or not. But anyways, that's it. That's the key to manifesting. Uh, I hope this podcast served you. If you got any value from it whatsoever, um, do me a favor. Give me a like. Give me a subscription. Do whatever you got to do. Uh, refer this podcast to a friend that is interested in learning how to manifest. Uh, it would be super helpful. See you next week.